Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guest with us. Tucker had a question. Yeah, so um, everybody, everybody knows I'm going to, if, if the Kodobi Days do the program, I'm, I'm there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be at this event, but I worry about, you know, before we spoke about the, the, the conference, we were talking about Nigeria running business and all of that. And I've always been a bit um, of the opinion that the only way to solve Nigeria's problem is to empower entrepreneurs so that they are able to become um, sustainable and employ the labor that puts people to work. Um, I would like you to help us, help business owners understand the importance of the investment and how government can also partner with trainings like this to empower businesses so that they can grow. Well, basically, um, all over the world, it's small businesses that grow the economy. Um, like we always say, it's not the job of government to be in business. The job of the government is to put policies in place, create an enabling environment and put infrastructures in place for small businesses to thrive. However, when you are now going into business, I keep emphasizing that you don't go into business for survival. Mm. Once your mindset is, ah, let me just do something so that I can take care of myself, take care of my family, I don't want to work for anybody there, you're already starting with the wrong mindset. But when you are going into business, you are going into business because you want to offer value and make a difference. And when that becomes the reason why you are in business, uh, you realize that you achieve more when you don't get, care who gets the credit. Your focus is just impact, transformation. And that will now also translate into staff. If you are a businessman in Nigeria today, you realize that majority of Nigerian graduates are unemployable. Mm. By the time you employ them, you have to train and retrain for them to be able to do what needs to be done. So once you are going in with transformational mindset, with value creation mindset, when you start a business, part of your vision will be anyone that comes to work in this organization, me mentoring them will be a part of my assignment. So I'm going to look beyond their certificate because some people are not well brought up, brought up even from home training. They don't have basic home training. So it's not even about, so somebody that's from the foundation of the home, there's no home training, they don't understand the basics of our life, they now went to school, curriculum is outdated, they came out, so they're already having double level of jeopardy. So when you are going to start a business, have it at the back of your mind that even though I'm employing them to pay them, I will look into how I can help them to become better in their personal life, in their grooming, courtesy, understanding but life. do and that, then, they yeah. go away in No, seconds. that is where I'm going to. Because that's why many people don't do that, but we are, that's why we are all here. So you do that, then even in the business, you are teaching them how to write letters, how to align, how to speak, how to do this, knowing fully well that they will go. But you are helping the country to develop. Ah. Mm. Yeah, that's the way it works. Because see, what you sow is what you reap. Because when they go, you employ the next one, you start all over again. If people before us have been doing what I told you to do, if they go, the next person you employ, you will need to redo that. Somebody else will have done that before they came to you. Yeah. So let's have that mindset of we are developing our country. So I have a commitment that anyone that works with me or in any of my organization, by the time you leave where you are working, anywhere you go to, they'll be thanking us. Ah, where did you come from? Valid. And we have had people had haunted from us. To us, it's a testament that eh, when bigger companies, bigger organizations are coming to us to come and take you, uh, we have done well. And that's the mindset we need to have. Then when it comes to the government, you see, we need to go back to local government. Thank God we're trying to, we're getting back there. You see, this government, government in Nigeria is big. Lagos State alone is more than about 14 different African countries. A lot of African countries are 2 million, 3 million. <laughs> And they are a whole country, they say they get presidents. That is just a <laughs> local government chairman or a councillor here. Yeah. So when we are talking government, government, we are looking too much to the federal. Mm. It is local government. In every local government, you know, we used to have technical schools. Mm. We used to have skill acquisition centers. All those things have been lost. We used to have summer school. We used to have a summer job. Yeah. All those things have been lost. That is the way the government partners with people. In every local government, there will be libraries, there will be technical schools, there will be skill acquisition centers, because everybody does not have to go through that route of academic education. Yeah. You can now go through technical education and be skilled to be able to offer things to the market, because certificate right now is not certifying anybody. Okay. okay, so this brings me to my question. So I just like the fact that you delved with, into the local government aspect. So I'm talking about education, and this is education at every level, even the lowest level, which is basic education. Because even when you acquire skills, you need like the basic education to be able to like even build clients, to even tell your customers what and what your services you're offering. So what are your thoughts in terms of, even in schools now, curriculums that they should teach business? Because for me, 
you know, I have a PhD, I have two masters, but then it took me a long time when I started um, my own business to even understand the business of law. I'm a lawyer. And to understand the business of law, I didn't know that there was a business of law. Yeah. It took me a long time to even understand why they have managing partners in law firms. As in those people that manage the law firm, the business of the law firm. So upon how educated I am, I didn't get that. And I struggled over and over again. And it took me a long time to catch that. So what's, what are your thoughts in terms of education to the basic level of teaching businesses and how it can be, even to primary school level, to secondary school level, how that can be, you know, if that can infiltrate, uh, yeah, infuse okay. and enter the Okay, so one, one of the, I believe in balance. One of the narratives that is out there now is that education is a scam. Education is not a scam. The curriculum is a scam. Mm. Education is not a scam. I never agree with you. Go ahead. It's the curriculum that is a scam. Yeah. Now, you see, there are four things that education does for you. It helps you to know how to read, how to write, how to calculate arithmetic and mathematics, and how to think analytically. Mm. So when you go to school, it now shows that this person knows how to read, write, calculate, and think. That's what education does. So everybody needs to go through that basic education where you are able to do those four things. Once you are able to do that, the next set of education should be things that can help you to offer value to your generation and solve the present day problem of the world that you live in. But many of our curriculum is not doing that. And now when it comes to education, you are talking about business. You see, there are technical skills and there are business skills. Now, the fact that you have a technical skill, you know how to design clothes, you know how to sew, you know how to bake, does not mean if you start a bakery or you start a fashion house, you are going to succeed. Mm -hmm. Because that's technical skill. The business skill is how do we get customers, how do we employ staff, how do we manage staff, how do we manage the resources, how do we scale up. Those are the business part. That's why, as a lawyer, there's a difference between the legal profession and legal business. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between medical profession and medical business. You can never become rich mm -hmm. through a profession. Mm -hmm but you can become rich through the business of the profession. And that comes through education. But you see, schools need to change the curriculum to include all these things. But apart from that, every individual needs to have the desire for personal development. Mm. Because no matter how much exactly. they teach you in school, it is you. You see, but they say when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. You are the one that will say, okay, I'm tired of where I am. I need to know more. You go for books. You go for seminar. That's why the kind of seminar we are doing right now is something that if you're a businessman today, yeah. Um, I've, we've been doing this seminar now. There are people that come in there. Um, uh, last year, yeah, I think, no, two years ago, a man came, he was 71 years old. He's been doing business for over 40 years. But he came there because he said that he listened to me here on your program. He came all the way from Milani and that he was, I've been listening to this one, but this one I need to go. Why did he come? He has run business for over 40 something years. And with all these uh, S-men and whatever, a man that had over 4,000 hectares, he said he has not been able to enter his farm for over four years. A man that had over 4 billion in the accounts in Nigeria is suffering. Why? Because he saw his money, 4 billion that he thought was like something, something million dollars, before his ready eyes. He said, so he came to see him, say, what do I do now? And the students are not even interested in the business. Because this Japa Japa, that by the time they go, they, they are not interested in what you think. So, so I just think that we should be committed to personal education. Mm -hmm. So that even if the schools don't give you, then you teach yourself. Toba be a the one they didn't teach you, you teach yourself. And the education is there, information is there. Yeah. Training, seminars, virtual conferences, all kinds of things are out there, both free and paid. How to train myself mm -hmm. anyways, you're correct. Yeah. So I like the fact that you've talked on self-development. Well, you know, some professions or um, skills have what we call this internship stage. We see it more with the artisan kind of business, but we don't see it when it comes to, you know, uh, professions like, you know, accounting and law. And it's a very important part of it, where somebody must intern. Then you, on a path to self-development, are interning at a particular place. They are teaching you the work. Because Amaka mentioned lawyers. As lawyers, that's one thing we all did. Work, you will learn the work, you go to court, you come back. But your boss knows the business of managing the firm mm. and he's not teaching you that rules because he, want, he cannot open trade secrets mm. because you're a potential opposition, Abi, mm -hmm, to you. How do you, while interning, take, you know, catch some of these things? I want you to address it because there are most lawyers coming up thinking they're interning and they have learned the business. Yeah? So in court, life, we say that some things are better caught than taught. Some things are better caught than taught. When you talk about education, there are dimensions to education. Emulation is the first step in education. 
then observation is the next step in education then training is the next step in it. so it's level so you start with emulation as a child you see people do things you do it mm -hmm. if i come to a table i don't know how to use the cutlery and i see people using the cutlery i'm just watching to say okay ah, okay they put on okay left hand okay <laughs> nobody's knowing but i'm emulating mm -hmm. so you emulate you observe ah, are they doing this ah, are they doing that so many times a lot of people that go to learn why they are sending you around you are not intuitive mm. you are not thinking you see i'm a pastor and the bible is one of the most amazing book whether it's business marriage you'll be shocked when nehemiah wanted to rebuild the walls of jerusalem he went to the king he said give me letter to this person for wood this person for this person visa to how did you know them mm. that means as they were coming to visit the king he was paying attention. attention. Okay, that's the Minister of Finance. Bless you, sir. He was connecting, collecting complimentary card. Mm. Uh, hello, sir. So, so that's the person in charge of visa. Mm. So he didn't go to them. He didn't abuse the position, but he utilized it to be able to prepare right. himself for opportunity. Because it is better to be prepared, waiting for opportunity, than for opportunity to come and meet some When the time now came, he now went. He knew exactly what to ask. Mm. Can you give me a letter to this, this, this? Because you couldn't come before a great man and be wasting his time. So it's what we call the elevator pitch. Sharp, sharp. He has asked, and he got it. Somebody else will have said, excuse me, sir. I'm trying to try. What can you do to help me? Mm. <laughs> you don't have anything to So when you are in that law firm, be wondering, okay, they are paying all of us. Ah, they paying us mm. how did they pay all of us you are paying lights we are paying ah, okay this okay go to court and go and do this okay how much did they charge this person ah, oh, it only, it only, ah, the accountant will say ah, it's three million he's three million how did they arrive at three million mm. Mm. Ah, how can you so, so but their own mind is hey you mean they collected three million they're just paying thirty thousand <laughs> that's what they are saying so, okay, how did they arrive at three million what are the costs in, 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 okay we went okay so what so that's how you think and when you begin to think that it will help you to ask the right question mm. because the question you ask will determine the answer you get those people say they don't want to teach you if you ask there are questions you ask that people will say what they don't want to say mm. Mm. and that question is what makes you to be able to I get really the answer wish people I go, they follow you, they they questions go. you ask. let me let me i have to go and report ah. let me try to think oh okay <laughs> let's go on a short break continue <laughs> we'll get back mm. I hope you will cut that. Yeah. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. The story of how Tom Tom gave me confidence. You left so many words and said <sighs> How life is this crowd? With Tom Tom, no Lily Let's do this Stay confident and stay focused Breathe for it with Tom Tom I feel good There are common features about successful people They are healthy and active With a mindset to win they start their day with a good meal and support their systems with Didion syrup of hemoglobin vitamin B12. Two spoonfuls of Didion's taken straight or mixed with your beverage for the office, gym or picnic keeps you in top form all day and you are always good to go. Didion syrup of hemoglobin. You are good to go. I'm ready to get back to school. Are you? Get a wristband ruler in every carton of Capri Sun with the Capri Sun back to school promo. Hop on! Capri Sun, a taste of fun. Alright everyone, no put your ideas, make we talk. Turn down to rearrange this house to give us a small wisdom. In a thing, say in a sad Shots might be fresh now, but you know home, I beg no be so. Before we go talk, say our smell no reach. We cannot think and try so. We know they get to the point una, with our small finger. We show Una solution is there. Ever heard of Colgate? The number one oil care brand in the world. On a slide, go find that thing to as it's supposed to be. You can see why we are the coolest around. Mama, 
The Edo governorship election is here. And TVC News is your go-to source for all the election action. As Governor Godwin Obaseki steps down, the race hots up for his successor. Three top contenders for one seat. Olumide Apata of the Labour Party, Aswe Godalo of the PDP, and Monday Okwebola of the APC. As the contenders make their case and the voters make their choices, who will emerge winner as a do decides? Stay tuned to TVC News for live coverage, in-depth analysis. Adumola Lawrence. Theophilus Elama. Sarah Ayoko. Ikenna Amici. Bill Zefkumbe. Salomon Ajiziogu. Uche Okoro, TVC News. And the latest updates as the results come in. TVC News, first with breaking news. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our business coach here with us, Dr. Olumide Imano. And before the break, he was talking about um, the three levels. That's the emulation, uh, observing, and then training. And, and how you can catch. Because sometimes people work somewhere and you have no clue. You just there, you just go, and you start thinking. And your mentality is the same mentality. Like, ah, these things are hard. And when people are going in the same industry, and they're seeing things and they're able to improve themselves. So I was going to add to that. Yeah, so um, when Nima asked the question, what came into my head was how, what I did. Because when you want to achieve what people that have gone ahead have achieved, and you feel like they are not giving you the reply you want, it is by observing what they are doing. So I checked what trainings did they do, what programs did, do they attend, what communities are they members of. So if, when I started following Dr. Lumide, it was based on, okay, I've seen, there's somebody I've seen who follows him and he has results, so I said I must follow the same person. Um, when I heard they went to LBS, I said, okay, these people, all, all these people that I've seen, every single one of them have achieved success. They all went to LBS, let me go to LBS. So if I see two or three people that they said they read a book, I'll go and read that book because it means that book gave them value. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked not what they did today, I went on Instagram page, Facebook page, and scroll down three, four, five years ago to see what they were doing. And by seeing what they did then, it helped me to understand what I needed to do now. Mm -hmm. Because you can be looking at them now and thinking it is what they did now that gave them the results. It's what they did five years ago, eight years ago, ten years ago. So I, I believe that it's extremely powerful that um, what, what she asked as a as the question is something that every body in your office, if the person, even if it's a corporate world, not entrepreneurship like my own, in the corporate world they say mind the gap. Where I am, I'm a junior executive. I want to become senior executive. How many go to the LinkedIn of your of the senior executive? Mm -hmm. Check them. How many courses your is he did IMC, he did CMC, he did PMP. All those things that he has written there, you go and do it. If you do it in five years, you would be even ahead of that person's position to achieve growth. But let me bring you back to business sustainability because it is <laughs> it is a lot of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I've spent more on consultancy and I've earned less money as a company, and. It did not make sense to even people within my office. Why are you spending so? Why are we spending more money paying consultants, paying for training when our account balance is not balancing? Can you help break down the importance of training and capacity building and consulting even when it looks like the money is not working? One of the major mistakes that a lot of uh, people do is that when they want to cut costs, they cut training budgets. And that's a major mistake because, you see, if your people don't know better, they cannot do better. I'll give you a true life story. Many years ago, if you know the story of the banking sector, uh, when the banks, the new generation banks started, they started setting up the schools where when people were, are employed in the bank, they now send them for like one month, two months, three months. Mm -hmm. They camp them, feed them, do everything, train them to understand the banking culture and also continue to pay them salary. Then came this new MD of one of the bankers. I said, ah, no, we cannot be training them and paying them at the same time. Mm. So let them do training under the senior people mm. that are there. So they scrapped that. 
thinking they were cutting costs. Mm. And then they brought one guy, put him under another guy. The guy comes into the banking sector, not understanding policies and all the stuff. He just listened to the man like, yes, sir, yes, sir. Because you're in a culture of yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And the person who was saying yes, sir, to that was like his hero was a fraud. And the guy was using him to commit all kind of work. We are signed this one. Yes, sir. But if you have gone to training, so even if they know. say sign, you will read yes, before you sign. sign. You will not just sign because you're guys. So he went through that. By the time they will discover the fraud, they now call the guy say, ah, that's a uh, oh, guy said I should sign. Hey, it's me that signed. Mm. Ah, it's a guy that said I should sign. Mm. He said, this, I didn't read. Those. Ah, what happened? Did mm. they not train? He said, no, I was not trained, though. Mm. They now realize that that's when they went back to the training. Mm. So <laughs> training is important because now, you saw this consulting and all the things you are looking, you are preparing for the next phase of your business. Mm. Your people are salary earners. They are not entrepreneurs. You are the entrepreneur. Mm. You know what you are doing. You are seeing what they are not seeing. It may take two, three years, five years and say, oh, that's what Oga was doing there. Mm. So it is important for you to train yourself, train your people, and prepare them for the next phase. Because you don't manufacture the weapons of war on the battlefield. Mm. Mm. You, have to, you don't manufacture your weapons of war on the battlefield. Mm. It is before the battle that you prepare the mm. weapon. That's what you are Let doing. Let me take this color. Yeah, okay. Usman from Abuja has been holding. Good morning, Usman. Uh, good morning, madam. But everything Dr. Olu is doing, I do with him. However, the don't people cannot work in Nigeria. Mm. What is that? All what we see is correct, but they cannot work in Nigeria. Mm, it's what, what you are saying cannot work. Can work. All in, in America, they have a mindset, a total mindset that makes all those systems work. But in Nigeria, we don't have that mindset. Our team does not give us a mindset of what is If you think I'm lying, many of us are great and it's not a book. It does not work. Whether you go to an enough not pay or you don't not pay, before you can get the contract, you have to buy your way in, which is going to bring it corruption. Mm -hmm. So what is what you think is correct? But you know what you need to do. So let me very much, Mr. So let me help. It's already working. I'm a testimony. This is a testimony right here before your very eyes. Mm -hmm. It's already working. You see, one of the things we need to understand is that many times bad news spread fast. Mm -hmm. And good news because of humility, everybody just wants to say, okay, oh, our culture, when your yam is big, don't cover it. Over it. It's already working. Mm -hmm. And when he said we read the books, we do this, I've said this over and again. Let me repeat again. Principles are universal. But you see, when you want to now apply those principles, it is personal, contextual, and geographical. Mm. So I can come here now and tell you real estate is very powerful, but not in Ukraine, mm. because they are in war. Mm. It doesn't mean what I've said is wrong, but it means that when you now look at your context, mm. at this stage, it may not be what I should do. Mm. So any principle, everything I've said that you say is right, is already working. There are people in Nigeria doing businesses, making money, and it is working for them because they know how to contextualize what they are going through. So he says something like, before you can get business, you have to bribe somebody. Even if you're a lawyer, you may not be able to get business. Now you see, what you are calling bribery is because when you needed the relationship, you did not have the relationship. Mm. But if you understand relationship, you are supposed to have a relationship before you need the relationship. Mm -hmm. So you start being a relational okay. person. There are people that you know that don't know you. Mm -hmm. There are people that you know, they know you, but they are not powerful enough to help you. Mm -hmm. There are people that are powerful enough to help you, they don't know you. Mm -hmm. So when you understand it, and before you get to a point where you need people, start making friends. Mm -hmm. Start making friends. Start connecting with people. Mm -hmm. Start being good to people. Hey, hello, how are you? You get their complimentary card, mm -hmm. and then once in a month, just to check on you. Mm -hmm. Not because you are looking for anything. Mm -hmm. You are investing. You are sowing. The, the day you now want to withdraw from that relationship, mm -hmm. and you now say, I'm sorry, I, 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 oh, that man is always staying in touch. Mm -hmm. That person is always staying in touch. Mm -hmm. That's how relationships are built. It's not when you now need somebody, you now go there. How will you, you come money. to me exactly. to say you are a powerful lawyer? Mm -hmm. And I've been in business for 15 years. You mean I don't know any lawyer before you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will now give you business. Mm -hmm. It's the people I've known no that I've tested that. I've, but if exactly. I don't know you, mm -hmm. but when you were in secondary school, mm -hmm. You came for a seminar where I was there. You started following me. And you always, by the time you go, oh, that girl has graduated. How are you? Ah! Mm -hmm. There will be something that says, okay, let's encourage this one to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know you're just starting. Mm -hmm. This is 200 million. Don't start with this 2 million one first. Mm -hmm. Let's start. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. So these things work. Let me talk about work. leadership because I know that at, at the summit, you're going to have, talking about leadership focus. A lot of leaders are frustrated mm -hmm. because um, 
if for, for, there are two parts of leadership. There's a leader and there's a followers. And I think that's what the last call I was trying to allude to. The mindset of the followers are just not right. In a company, you invest, you do all the works, you do the textbook yeah. things, you train them, and many of them are just not bought into the vision. So as a leader, you feel like your hands are tied. You're doing everything Dr. Lumide asked you to do, but yet the people I have hired, who they are just not aligned. Yeah, I agree with you. See, that's why I said earlier on, you see, perception, perspective. We're all sitting on this table. Because of where you are sitting, it affects your perspective. Because of the lenses you have on, it affects your perspective. I used to be there. The way, when I speak with authority and with confidence, is because I don't talk theory. I have suffered. I have made mistakes. So I speak from the point of, I know what I'm talking about. I have trained, 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 trained. You will train them, they will leave you. They will be using your office to apply for another job. You will do until I gain perspective that look, it will continue like that. You can't change that one. Don't worry about what you cannot change. Change your perspective and see that anyone that comes here, this is a training school to prepare them for the next place they are going to. Once I did that, and even now, as they say, well, so whenever you are leaving, let us know. I don't have that connection of, oh, this one will soon leave me. I pour where next they go. But guess what? Most of the people I trained that I let go of, mm -hmm. they are coming back today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the real estate, pertinence, mm -hmm. all these alone, they are my real talk. People that were collecting commission mm -hmm. that I was giving 5,000, giving 10,000. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Our life page, all these people. Mm -hmm. Look at Tokwe, how many years? Three years. Mm -hmm. Look at the realm she has gone to. This, but today now, I can sit down. If I tie all of them down, they will still be my company now. Maybe we'll be talking minimum wages now. This You have to pay us this. Mm -hmm. But they are doing amazingly well. Yeah. Let us change our perspective. So as a leader, you cannot control what you cannot control. Let me take control this the one you can control. From Abuja, when I come to you, Amaka. Good morning, work. Hello, good morning. You're live. Yeah. Your name, your name is Wok from you? Abuja. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, well... Um, I think that in the field, I'm going to take this meeting. Um, one thing I want to say about this, you know, the perspective of this meeting. It's a bit muffled, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? It's very muffled, but go ahead. How about now? Can you hear yes, me now? Yes, better. better. All right, thank you. So, uh, as I was saying from the perspective of your uh, guest earlier, you know, you made mention of something regarding our leaders. That is the first mistake I feel like we all make. These people don't possess, I mean, possess any, you know, trait of a leadership. We should be calling them rulers in the first place. Because a leader should lead by example, as you already said. How many of them are now leading by example? None. And the ironic part is still that the citizens will still be like, you know, in support of these people at the end of the day. So who are we now deceiving? All right. Thank you very much, Wok. Let me go on a short break. When I come back, we we'll continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Coffee, Gina is coffee, coffee. Unipex cough syrup contains ammonium chloride, diphenhydramine hydrochloride, sodium citrate, and menthol crystals to give you relief from sore throat, cold, and chesty cough. Daddy, are we safe now? Yeah. Uniplex cough syrup. Gauge the cough, free your voice. When you wake up in the morning, you want to start your day. Start with Kellogg's, with Kellogg's. It is tasty and nutritious. That's why we start our days with Kellogg's, with Kellogg's. So you can be your race, stay active and alert. Start your day right, cause breakfast time is Kellogg's. So you can be your race, stay active and alert. Start your day right, cause breakfast time is Kellogg's. 
always want what's best for my family. That's why we ensure we start our day with a Kellogg's breakfast fortified with essential vitamins and minerals to stay active and alert to reach your grace. breakfast time is Kellogg's time. Confidence is important in life's little moments. Strong teeth can help, even if they get her into trouble sometimes. A great smile is useful to break the ice. And making friends is easier when you know you have fresh breath. I give my family confidence with Pepsodent Triple Protection 123. Its antibacterial action formula gives them cavity protection, white teeth, and fresh breath. The confidence of three to pasting one. Pepsodent Triple Protection 123. Tomato mix in a new stand up pouch. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our business coach with us today, Dr. Olumide Emanuel. You had a question. Yes, please. Okay, so we, I, I believe that we can't talk about business without talking about money, right? Or financing or funding. Mm -hmm. So um, what are your thoughts in terms of what would you say to business owners who um, they want to scale up? They are scared to scale up, maybe because of interest rates now with the banks and stuff that they won't be able. They might not be able to pay back with um, the different policies coming up that may impede on those finances. What do you say to them in terms of their mindset of scaling up, taking a loan, getting funding? You know, because most people want to do that, but they are scared to scale up their businesses. What do you have to the, say about that? The richest man in Africa is Dangote and that thing they said they have they keep overtaking yes, themselves. Mm -hmm. But we all know he's a debtor, he's owing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there is a difference between good debt and bad debt. Mm -hmm. But before we even talk about going to a bank loan, you know I said earlier on that businesses start with startup phase, mm -hmm. growth phase, scaling phase, stability phase, so growth and expansion, then sustainability. Mm -hmm. But now a lot of people in this part of the world, one thing I've noticed is that we want to own everything by ourselves. It is better to have 10% of a billion mm. than to have 100% of a thousand. Mm. So many times when it's time to scale up, investors, venture capitalists will not give you money when you have not had something that they can see as either an hypothesis, mm. a point, or something that has worked. So once you have done something that has produced a level of results, that you have a track record to say, this is our books, this is the trajectory, this is how we have gone, then look for investors. Because investor fund is a cheaper fund. They come in as stakeholders. They are not expecting you to be paying them this return every year. Or oh, no, 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 they are coming in to join. So if I need, let's say I need let me, a billion to take my business to another level. If I go to bank to borrow one billion, I'm going to be paying interest, hmm. 30, 32 different things, hmm. and a lot of things can change. Economy can shift on me. But if I say, okay, I want to do a billion, this business is now a 50 billion business, a 30 billion business. But for that one billion, I want to let go of 10% of my business. Hmm. That means I will get that one billion without having to pay interest, but letting go of 10%. And that 10% I've let go gives me the one billion to now work at my pace and do better. So we need to always think beyond just going to bank. Bank, you, at a point, you may have to go, but there are things you can do without having to go to the bank. Mm -hmm. There are things you have, and that is where creative finance comes in. Mm -hmm. And it's better to operate with that. Use what you have, or use the low-hanging fruit than to go to bank. That banking should be like a last resort, because what many people don't know, 
For every loan you collect in any financial institution, there are two things you must sign. Mm. It's part of the fine print. Number one, they can change the interest rate at any time. Mm. And you have to agree to it. Mm -hmm. Number two, they can call for the money at mm -hmm. any time. Even if they say, we are giving you this loan for five years, they can decide to say, we have changed our mind. We can no more do five years. We need our money Three in years. six months. And you have to agree to it because it's part of their debt to run business. And things can change. Central Bank can come up with a law that cancels whatever they have agreed with you. Let me take Toby from Mira. Thanks for calling Toby. You're live. Good morning. Thank Good morning. Um, I know Mr. Tolu did talk about um, the summit that is coming up. Well, not all of us have happened to be there. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, sir, I would like to ask, how long should you be in business or uh, uh, before you know, oh, this is not going to work, then you have to back out? Is there a time for you to know, ah, this is not going to work, let me just do something else? Or do you just be patient and keep doing it because we know in Nigeria things are not really um, going as it should be. So is there a time for you to know this is not for me, let me go into something else. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to answer you but let me say this. One of, one of the things we need to understand that in life there are different aspects of life that does not have a yes or no answer mm -hmm. uh, and they don't have an answer that is generic to everybody. Because different business, different industries, different sectors have different gestation period and different factors. Um, Amazon, they kept investing in Amazon, according to the information in the public domain, for about 13 or 17 years before it started making money. Facebook, eight years. They just kept putting money, putting money, putting money, because they believed that it was like a bottomless pit, but we can see the result now. So we know what Elon Musk has done, putting billions upon billions, losing money. But I will say to you, to now give you my own answer, five years. Whatever you do, I've studied, I've been in business terrain now 37 years. I've run businesses that have failed. I've run businesses that have succeeded on a global scale. So I can tell you that anything you do, and you put in everything, you are developing yourself, you are doing adjustment, and five years is not showing results. It's time to move on and do something else. Mm -hmm. And that may mean, listen to this, a change of strategy, a change of location, a change of position, or a change of business. So it may not mean that you shut the business, but it may mean that ah, the strategy I'm using is not working. I have to change the strategy completely. It may mean a change of location. This location is not going to help this business. I need to move to a new location. It may mean a change of position. I am not the kind of person that can make this business work. So let me step aside and be a founder and get somebody else to be the manager of this business. And it may not be a change of business completely. To say this business is not going anywhere. And then you check out. So five years. You know, I, I know, I know somebody who does business, and the person is not trying to scale. And it's a business that is very, very lucrative. It's scalable. It's scalable. But the person is comfortable with the, this small money that is coming. And people are trying, and they are men, because a lot of men don't like to go for training. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe I'm, I don't want to be sexist, but there are lots of information out there that can help a man to grow his business. But sometimes ego gets in the way. Or feel like, oh, you're a businessman, you know these things. What, what does Illuminate Woman want to teach me? What does Larry Lisa? I beg, I beg, leave me. I can manage what I'm doing for myself. But there's the. So, how do you help somebody who knows he's doing the basics and he's getting results, but he needs, he needs information? To, he needs to be encouraged to get to the next level. How do you help that kind of person? Um, you cannot help a chicken to fly. Mm. If it is not there, it's not there. You cannot teach a man anything except you help him to discover what's already within himself. Mm -hmm. When you try to motivate a chicken to fly, you frustrate yourself and frustrate the chicken. Chickens have wings. Birds have wings. Birds can fly. Chickens cannot fly. Wings does not equal to flight. What makes them to fly is on mm -hmm. the inside of them. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, what we are supposed to do is to continually see how we can help people birds hunger and desire inside them mm. so that they will be the one looking for the solution by themselves. Everything that is externally motivated without an internal agreement will never work. Mm. That's why they say you can take a horse to the river because you cannot force the horse to drink. But to force the horse to drink, there is something you can do. Put salt in his mouth. Start putting salt in the mouth of the horse. The horse will become thirsty and look for water, water by itself. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, so how do you put salt <laughs> in the mouth of the horse? Put them in environments and around people and places 
that inspires and motivates them to be better. You see, when okay, she came into the billionaires' conclave. Before she came, she said, oh, 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 I can't afford that. I said, look, okay, hey, let me pay some mentality. Forget if you are paying some mentally, you are not ready. Stretch. Hey. I said, when you enter that place and you see your mates and see younger people, oh. you will wake up. When she came, she said, ah, what this is that is something. Also, billion Nigeria, you know. People are talking billion turnover as if, is it not the same Nigeria? And this is not fraud. This is clean business. Our mindset changed. There are many things she's doing. I'm like, I talk a level easily because I'm not, I don't even need to be motivating and be talking. Sometimes I say, I say, hey, talk why are you doing this? How are you doing that? No, this kind of. And, but now I'm like, okay. Because she's going around pursuing things for herself because the thing has come from the inside. Mm -hmm. So if you have people around you like that, put shots in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm reading comments and I've listened to two callers who think it's impossible to do here. How do you? Apart from the salts in the mouth, <laughs> you know, change this Nigerian popular mindset, you know, that things can't, can't work, work here. here. There's this, we just see, we, if you enter two, three ministries, they jam you. You just think until Japa. So when you're mentoring somebody, the person most likely will use your resources in your office to Japa. Mm. How do you change this pessimistic mindset? It's, 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 a challenging, it's a challenging thing because the environment continually fights it. So I give you an example from the point of being a pastor. I've been a pastor now. I've been a minister now. By October, I was celebrating 35 years in full-time ministry. Mm. And I see how poor people in my church. Thousands of people. I was seeing churches like thousands. You see everywhere full. But in your mind, you are like, is this how these people will continue? Because you know that what will help them, they are not ready to do it. So I've pastored for 35 years. I've taught people, these are the things you need to do. These are the things you need to do. But they don't believe. They believe that it is pray for them. Mm. Oh, and one miracle will just happen. Because uh, unmerited fever, we're all looking. No. <laughs> you know, the person that gave unmerited fever shed his blood. Mm. Anything that is free is mm. not cheap. Somebody paid for it. Mm. So, we, you see, you cannot pray your way into miracle when you are not the kind of person that can undo the miracle. Mm. You can't expect somebody to anoint you to be a pilot, anoint you to be a medical doctor, <laughs> anoint you to be a billionaire. It doesn't work like that. Mm. So, in our world today, no matter what you say, until people have encounters that changes that. You can't help them. Mm. I've seen, I've actually had a pastor people every week, they tell them, they, sit, they are still there 30 years. Mm. And you are like, is it that difficult to make one million? But it's like, and I started with them, Bubba John Jamal, Lero Yani. We're all trekking. So it's not as if I came from everyone. As I was practicing, I said, ah, I've discovered this thing, you know, 1998, when I came to, I said, ah, my people, all this, as we are paying 10% from now, is a law. As you are bringing 10%, you must be saving 10%. Mm -hmm. Don't bring any 10% here if you are not saving. You don't have a future without saving. 1998, 2024, I started doing it. Those that did it, they have changed something. Eh, 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 not eh, enough. Eh, eh. So like, let's talk so, about the, the money is not enough. The money is not enough. I don't have enough. Um, I can't pay for this training. Um, it is those that have money that can attend these things um, and all of that. And some people are calling out that, how can you be a pastor and be charging this much money for a training? Don't you see the way the country is? Like I've just said, to help us, like I've just said that I've been preaching money. for 35 years. I don't charge. I see preach yesterday. They didn't pay. <laughs> so there, there is audience for everything. Now, there's a difference between Pastor Lubi Demana and Dr. Lubi Demana. Mm. Pastor Lubi Demana is a pastor called of God, ordained of God, to use the word of God to help people mm. to fulfill destiny. Dr. Lou Demana is a man that has gone to train himself to become a professional in his field. Mm -hmm. He has two PhD, he has two masters, he pays school fees. Prayer and anointing oil was not the school fees that he paid. And then he uses that information to help businesses and organizations that are interested in doing that. And because of his faith-based belief, he does free events to help people, and then he does paid events for those that can afford to come into the paid events so that he can do something more intensive with them. Every information that you need is available on Google. Mm -hmm. You don't need to come to my seminar to have information. Mm -hmm. YouTube is there. It's just lazy mindset and mindset of people that don't understand the way the world works. And if you are coming to a meeting, go to Sheraton by yourself mm -hmm. and ask them, how much is your hall mm -hmm. to rent this hall? So by the time you go to uh, Marriott Hotel, Marriott Banquet Hall right now is 7.5 million for one day. I'm doing two days meeting, they're 15 million. Mm -hmm. So I pay 15 million for all. You will now come for free. Okay. It's but, just, but see, so uh, it's not for you. Dr. Lumi, that's why I said. That's why I said, that's why I said that this meeting now is not for everybody. We don't even need crowd. I agree, I agree that you do your free events, yeah. but you are 
doctor and pastor. So there's no way there. There must be a meeting point, confluence inside these two. <laughs> How many... Do, because you can see a potential in somebody who doesn't have the means. Yeah. I'm, you as you're gifted, so you will see. There will be two, three members of your um, church or your family or your neighborhood that you'd see two, three people and say, this person can grow. But this is, and you, this person I will give scholarship for every event. The, every year the, we do that. Uh, yeah. So how, how many have you been able to use as your this, example? This year alone. Mm -hmm. This year alone. We have given scholarship to 147 people. This year alone. Maybe I was here for the to talk events. about the January yeah. one. Free yeah. and paid. Mm -hmm. The January one we did, I came here now to announce let it. Me, on let, this me ask you concerning, uh, <laughs> let me Let me ask you because then the, sustainable, the sustainability system, because there are people who are watching us internationally and thinking, how do I join? Because when in, you, you've been going on a global tour, mm -hmm. meeting Nigerians all over the world, many of them are trying to start businesses, own, uh, be entrepreneurs, do something home. And they would like to also attend this is there an online version for them to attend? Most of our events are not virtual. They are actually in-house. You have to physically come. Why? You see, many times we don't realize that there are some things that are even not healthy. And I'm, I'm, I'm holistic in my view. You want to go for a meeting from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. online, as I now, to have your eye on the screen for 12 hours. It, it's not healthy. It can't you, can't, you can't walk. It can't work. So let's just face reality that everything is not for you. The one that is for you, go there. The one that is not for you, leave it for those that, are, that it is for. Don't argue that why are you people, they, they face the one we consign you. Mm. We are wasting time on what is not our business. There is so much, look, the same people now, I will still be back because the free one again is in January. I will be back again to talk about the free one. They will still not come. Mm -hmm. You come to, you go to Abuja. When are you coming to Ilani? You go to Ilani. When are you coming to Patakot? But we have only two American embassies in Nigeria. And when you want visa, way. you find your okay. way. Mm. You find your way. People are not serious. Mm. I've been around enough with proofs and evidence and track record to tell you people are not serious. Mm. They are just looking for excuses to stay the way they are. People that are serious, when you are thirsty, you don't ask the river to look for you. You will look for water. Mm. When you are really thirsty, when you are really ready, you will go for it. So if you are ready, contact us. Tell us again about it. The... So the Business Sustainability Summit is coming up Friday, the 27th of this month of September just a few weeks from now. It's a whole day event. So if you are supposed to be with us for the whole day, you don't have the funds to do the fully residential version, just come. We we'll start by 9 a.m. from 8 a.m. registration, start 9 to 5. And instead of 500,000, you pay 300,000. Mm. And I can tell you, when you come, well, I have a testimony <laughs> here. There are people that have come to our meetings. And you've been there, you were there last year. By the time they finish, mm. they will now be bringing more money by themselves. To say, no, 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 this thing is worth more than, or what else can we do? Ah, ah, we have to pay. It's just, it's something we have seen. So it's 300,000 instead of 500,000. But if you want to be a part of the fully residential, then you will stay with us up to Saturday. Then we have a dinner, a coaching session. On, so we'll finish by five. You go and rest by seven. We'll now sit down and do a coaching session. And then on Saturday morning, we'll do another hangout over breakfast before you leave. So call the numbers on the screen 0809. 144 7423 or 0802 305 And then pay before Friday. We have only 13 slots. <laughs> and if you are not paying by this Friday, you either pay the full price or you wait till next year. <laughs> and um, I believe very strongly that um, if we know better, we'll do better. So make sure that you are learning. Go online. There are a lot of courses on YouTube, absolutely free. With COVID, a lot of Ivy League universities all over the world have come up with a lot of courses. Four weeks, three weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, absolutely free. A lot of entrepreneurs, organizations, and philanthropists have put money into many institutions, sponsored them to come up with courses to give people relevant skills for the present day world. Fourth Industrial Revolution, Fifth Industrial Revolution, AI, Robotics, Analytics, Coding, everything free. They are all online. Instead of using that 200 Naira to be insulting and gossiping online mm -hmm. and be talking about who did BBL, who disappointed who, who broke who, who did they serve very fast, work on your life. Mm -hmm. Nobody grows young, everybody grows old. Yeah. You think you are young, before you know it, you are 30, you are 40, you are 50. Work on your life, fix your life, and stop wasting time on irrelevant things. Nobody will help you plan your life without your direct involvement. So if it's going to be, it's up to you. 
-hmm. An object will remain stagnant until a force is applied. Your life will remain the same way it is until you do something meaningful about it. Let's find some questions for you online. Let's see. Uh, while we are waiting for questions to drop, okay, let me just quote this. KG Nester says, quoting you, when you try to motivate chicken to fly, you will frustrate yourself and the chicken. He said, Dr. Lumide Emanuel, word. So people should oh. put that on their table and work with it. Um, oh, yesterday I was driving from, the, from school shopping and my son said, Mommy, problem is a good thing, right? I was confused. I was like, eh. And I said, yes, now. The problem, you find, when you find solution, you get money. And I've never had such a conversation before. So I was like, so which kind of problem you define now? <laughs> because me, I don't want problem. And he was like, yes, now. You solve the problem and you sell it and yeah. you get money. So how should Nigerians be looking outside now? Because probably great full ground yeah, now. Yeah, money, money. Charlie, this I'll, petrol I'll, now. Yeah, I've said it on I'm this sorry, platform please, before. Please, yeah. can I just add to that? Because yeah. the same thing. And <laughs> also, for someone that is a hard worker, resilient, the whole works, mm -hmm. but then they don't know what type of business they mm -hmm. should do, or they don't know mm -hmm. what they are passionate about. So let's tie it together. So I've said it before. There are 10 places where money hides. It's in my book. Go to my social media platform. Everything is there. 10 places where money hides. Number one, money hides in people. Mm. We have over 8 billion people on Earth, over 25 billion people in Lagos, about uh, 270 million people in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So this is people. Money is in people. If you solve problem for them, you will get money. Number two, money hides in problem. So every problem is money in disguise. Nobody pays you for the problem you identify. They pay you for the problem you solve. Mm. Everybody on Earth today is making money by solving problems. Mm. The food seller is making money by solving your hunger problem. The school is solving money by solving education and ignorant problem. The landlord is solving shelter problem. And that's how it works. So if you want to make money, look for problem to solve. And once you're able, that's why I spoke about the basic need. What are the basic needs? When you solve it, you are good to go. Then to come to your uh, question, you see, there are things that we have been taught and that we have practiced that we later discover is not the ideal. When we were growing up in business, when I started out, you get a product and then you start looking for markets. Yeah, I have this product to come and buy. They will later realize that it's a wrong formula. The first thing you're supposed to do is to go and look for a market, a ready market, a hungry market that is looking for something to solve a problem for them. You now create a product to go and give to them. At that point, the market is waiting for your product. Mm -hmm. Before now, we're told, pursue your passion, pursue your passion. And then people pursue passion. They ended up with passion. Why? Hmm. Because we now realize that passion is powerful, but passion does not pay early. Mm. So, pursue your passion. Stay focused on your passion. Mm. But while you are building and focusing on your passion, get something else you will do to sustain you before your passion begins to pay. Yeah. Because passion does not pay early, but when it begins to pay, it can yeah. pay for life. And then, because you are pursuing your passion, does not mean you should not take advantage of the opportunity to make money that is around you. Mm. I don't think that... All the people that are making money, is Dangote passionate about crude oil? Mm. Is he passionate about spaghetti or cement? So business Do you understand now? So yeah. he's maximizing the opportunities around because of the problem he has seen. Mm. Why did he go into fuel? Mm. He saw that this thing, this country is not doing, let me go and make money there. Because everywhere there is problem, there is money. Mm. So to answer that question, that pursue your passion, discover it, pursue it, but while you are pursuing it, get something doing. That I, keep I, I wanted to mention together. this comment because yeah. I mean I think it's also similar to all the comments we've been seeing so so, yeah. so maybe this is something you also need to see as a problem to solve. Okay. Because this person is saying that I have opened three businesses for my wife and they have all failed. Mm. She has gone for trainings, yet the businesses have failed. So what is her problem? So obviously there are many people getting information, they are reading books, they are but they are still not getting you through. See, the missing link is mentorship. You see, many times when we talk about mentorship, people think we are just hyping this thing. Because you see. You see, a mentor helps you to be able to contextualize your confusion. Mm -hmm. Because a mentor is one that has gone through what you have g gone through before. A, 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 one of my pastors came into my office with his wife. Argument. Hungry. The guy has given this woman three million at a point, five million at a point. This same kind of story. Nothing was working. And the guy was frustrated. And they came. And as they were talking and talking and talking and talking, you see, she doesn't, doesn't understand. I will give her money. She will be selling on credit. She will not collect money. She will be telling me, yeah, I feel like, let's leave the money alone. Da, 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 da. So after they have said everything, so I asked him one question to go back to what I said earlier. I said, did your wife ever come to you to say she wanted to start a business? Mm. Or you had the one that told her she should go and start a business? He kept quiet. 
They kept quiet. And the woman looked at me. And the way she looked at me, I said, speak. Don't be afraid, speak. <laughs> you see, Pastor, I'm not a business person. I'm a career person. Mm. But the man feels you should be a business person. You should be a business person. So most of the time, that chicken cannot fly. <laughs> The, the woman, if somebody is coming to tell you, I'll give you another example. In 12 years ago, one of my pastor's wife, they came to me, problem. The wife was telling the husband, I need 80 million to start a school. 12 years ago, 80 million to start a school. And the man said, you are my wife. I know you have been in the educational sector. You cannot run a school. And the woman saw it as you don't believe in me. How can you look down at me? You know, he said, No, you are a good person. But school is a business. You don't have the business skill. Because for you to be asking me for 80 million, it already shows you don't understand that you're supposed to start and grow. Mm. How many years ago? 12 years ago. This year, 2024, I sat down with the same woman. She wants to start a school. I said, So how much do you need? She said, 10 million. <laughs> now she's ready. Yeah. She said 10 million. When she said 10 million, I knew she was ready. <laughs> but I now told her, I said 10 million cannot work. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. I said, so let's look at it. Now the school has started. Mm. And everything that has been spent on that school, mm. less than 60 million. Powerful. Mm. Started. Shouldn't I resume now? So many times, these things, okay. when you have a mentor, okay. they'll be able to help you. So don't force That's it. all we can take <laughs> into this show. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Dr. Olomide. It's always a pleasure having you. Yes, sir. And, uh, thank you for having me. From you. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.